rapping. Did you always want to be a rapper? How did you start rapping? <laughs> the answer to most of these questions will always be women. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it don't get no more complicated than that. It's not even complicated as women. But no, I mean, again, we touched on it prior to it even being called hip hop. You know, it was just something we did for escapism to have fun, to meet the girls, the girls to meet the guys, all of that. So for me, you know, when this thing starts, it's interesting because I used to be in a band many, many, many lifetimes ago. And one of the members in the band was a guy by the name of Clarence. Uh, Stanley and Clarence, the nickname was Smokey. He was a drummer in the band we was in. He too, experimenting in the streets, parents getting worried. He, they sent him up to Mount Vernon to live, thinking he would stay out of trouble there. Make a little story short, every once in a while, he would come back to visit the old neighborhood and he would always tell me and the other, you know, this was in my cornball days when I was like that nerd before getting introduced to the streets. He's like, yo, I'm telling you, you need to check out this thing they're doing. Let me show you. And he got on, we was in one of our people's parents' home, and he got on our, their turntable and was doing his thing with the thing, but he, he wasn't doing it right. You know what I'm saying? Well, looking back on it now, we didn't know what the heck he was talking about. Uh, that cat was the original member of, um, what's the group that uh, Master Don and the Masters of Ceremony? Yeah, He was with that group. And he was trying to tell us about what would be called hip hop. So for me, I experimented with, my mother, mother and father's turntables in the house. That didn't work out well. I did my breakdancing thing to, in regards to, I guess, finding my identity in this thing that was going to become a culture. But then when it got to getting on the microphone and doing those rhymes at the age of one, I just begun at the age of two, I knew what to do. All of those rhymes, you know, it, it seemed like the fit. And I liked the way the, the girls were responding. So that was that was my thing, you know, and the crew that I was with at the time, we was like that one rare crew from our area that would go uptown, would go to Harlem, you know, would go to the places Queens cats ain't supposed to go. But that's just how hungry we was for whatever this thing that was was birthing at the time. What was your original rap name? <laughs> uh, that's funny, too. It was, you know, I, I tell when I speak to students, I say, you'll never guess what the number one thing I wanted when I was really getting into this thing that would be this culture. So I said, take a guess. They go, women, cars, jewelry. I said, no. The thing I wanted so bad that I identified with cats that I looked up to in the street was they all had dope nicknames. I wanted a nickname so bad. So the first nickname to my recollection I had was called was Chris C. But when you said it fast, it was suspect. You know, <laughs> Chris C., so I'm like, nah, that ain't going to work. But one of the things that I did too, the first school I was accepted to high school was the High School of Art and Design. So I'm a self-taught artist. So I used to paint to get, you know, ends, paint uh, people's names and graffiti on their jeans. Back then, if you remember, it was the Lee jeans and it wasn't no skinny jeans and it wasn't no boot cut. It was the, you know, bell bottom. So it was enough real estate on the leg to put some names on there. And that, what was going on with my father at the time and, and me just the becoming of was that I really wanted to hang out with these cats. Like we had cats like Chaco Bean and June Bug and Beanie, all these cats I looked up to in the neighborhood that had it on lock. Big medallions, the nylon underwear, you know, in the summertime, you know, all of that stuff. It was good times in New York uh, in spite of other things that I share. So one of the ways I began to have an identity and get the attention of these guys was they wanted to know who was doing these jeans. And they found me, or I was around to be found. And uh, these cats, you know, I would charge 50 cents to 75 cents a letter on a person's leg. So the cats would want their jeans to be done. And I'm intimidated because these cats are the real deal. They ain't no... They real, you know. These cats was doing time like it was like nothing. Do time in the winter, get out in the summer, all you know, swollen muffin. But um, so I got their attention, and I'm I'm feeling like, yo, these cats know me. I'm doing their jeans, so they'd be like, you know, I, regular cats jeans. I was doing. I already had quite a stack of jeans to be done because I wasn't a great businessman then. I was just collecting the money, and I'll get to your jeans. So when these cats came up to me, intimidating as all get out, 
and be like, yo, you know, I want my jeans done. How much it is to do it? So that's 75 cents a letter. They're like, so when can they get done? These cats wanted their jeans done like next week or tomorrow and stuff. And I'm like, nah, I got st- other people's jeans I got to do. I can have your jeans ready in a month. They wasn't having that. These cats would just throw me like a hundred dollar bill, $200 to put them at the front of the line. And I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the bad it, I'm a poor businessman. Keep this in mind. Or my assembly line wasn't up to par. I was taking on more than I could chew. So when these cats, was, it was time for their jeans to be done. Their jeans weren't done. So here I am with knots in my stomach. I can't frequent the park or any of these places that we would all hang out at because I know they're going to come looking for me for their jeans. But what saved me a lot of times, which I'm <laughs> sad to say, is these cats would usually end up getting locked up. And when they got locked up, I didn't have to give them their jeans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was $100, $200 I was getting. You know, it was like free money. But that was another way of me beginning to be on the radar in regards to being known by these guys I wanted to be known by really, really bad. I wanted that affiliation. So so did that segue in some way to, to that nickname you was looking for? To that? Oh yeah, I got off track with that. So what ended up happening was my signature to know that I did the jeans. For some reason, well, all of us at that age, we love the Playboy magazines. So I mastered the bunny, the iconic bunny with Playboy. But when I did the bunny, I had one of his ears would be bent. So I had you I'd have your name on the side, but you knew I did it because I put I put that bunny somewhere. So I got the name Playboy, you know, and I put Playboy Mr. C. So some of the things happened with that for the sake of time, but as time went on, and then I'm doing my thing, trying to be what I'm gonna be on the microphone and so forth and so on. People just started putting two and two together. The Playboy Mr. C, another guy had the name Mr. C. He wanted to fight me over the name. So we went through all of that stuff with that. It wasn't really worth it. So it just ended up being Playboy. And then as, you know, my real name is Christopher, but back then when you know me good, you're just going to call me Chris. So the same thing with Playboy, close friends would drop the boy and just say, yo, what's up, Play? Things like that. And then at the time, I think some guys weren't really interested in calling another guy Playboy because that's almost like saying you're better than me with the women. So I think that had something to do with it, too. So, yeah, yeah, that's how that came about. Short edited version. 